My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Cheap Wheels. When it comes to washing cars, I'm no expert. As a matter of fact, I'm not even an aficionado. In fact, I don't even care. But over a lifetime of doing my own mechanic work, I've run across these reoccurring themes when it comes to washing your car. Start from the top, work your way down, use a microfiber mitt, make sure you've got a clean bucket, work in the shade, wash in lines, not circles. Use a good quality car soap, not just dish soap. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through all of those best practices for washing your car. The car that we're gonna use is my old F250, which I personally have never washed. Stay tuned. Ah yeah, this old truck has a very thick layer of oxidation and dirt on it from years of neglect. Not to mention the fact that it's black and everything shows up. And it's an old beater to start with. If you take a look at the paint, you think, well, it's probably not in that bad of shape. Take a look at right here. Here's a good demonstration. This area has been rubbed off with the edge of my t-shirt. Everything else is this old oxidized, dirty paint. What could be better than an old black truck? An old blacker black truck. Let's wash this thing up. Hopefully restore that paint a little bit to what it's supposed to look like. First things first, we're gonna start with a clean bucket. Pretty obviously, we don't want to introduce dirt into the washing process that's not already on the vehicle. So I'm going to clean this bucket first and get it ready to go. One of the reoccurring themes for people who know and care is to use a microfiber wash mitt. This one is made by the detailer's choice. The soap that we're going to use is Turtle Wax Concentrated Car Wash. Now the directions say use approximately one ounce per gallon of water. That's about an ounce, that's about an ounce. That looks good, whatever. Now I'm gonna just gonna take this microfiber mitt and I'm gonna throw it in the bucket, get it soaking. Now one thing that you wanna make sure you do is pre-rinse every inch of the vehicle. You wanna make sure that any loose dirt is washed off and any dirt that's remaining is wet. That's gonna help it slide off the clear coat, slide off the paint without damaging the paint. I'm gonna make sure during the process that I keep all of the paint wet. Well, let's get started washing here. I'm gonna wash from the top down and I'm gonna avoid washing in circles, but rather wash in long lines. As that microfiber mitt gets dirty, I'm constantly turning it around my wrist, so I'm using a fresh area. When most of the mitt has, has become dirty, I'm taking it back to the bucket and rinsing it out. Oh, you can feel that that paint has just got texture to it where it's just gritty and oxidized. Wow. It feels like it's a flat black, not a gloss black. Now this is a pretty interesting shot. This side I just washed and I could feel the texture in the paint. The other side is just wet, but you can see there's so much dirt. It, it actually has a, it's got a texture. Two best practices people talk about are washing from the top down and washing in sections. I'm kind of doing both here. I started with the roof and the top of the door and the top of the box and the hood. Once I get all of these areas washed, everything down to that crease that runs along all the body panels, I'm going to consider that my first section and I'm going to rinse everything down. From there I'm going to do the grill, I'm going to do the headlights and I'm going to do the metal that's underneath the grill. And from this section I'm going to go all the way front to the back of the truck and do everything that's in the middle. Now from here on, what we're going to do, we're going to go from this uh, body line right here, we're going to go down. I'm going to clean the fender, I'm going to clean the door, and I'm going to clean the bed down to midway. I'm going to leave this very last section along the bottom for last because that section picks up the most dirt. From here on out, I'm going to be washing the middle of the truck and then ultimately when I get to the very bottom, I'm going to wash the bottom, which is always the dirtiest part. 
Of course, I'm going to wash it last because I don't want to reintroduce that dirt. And when I'm done, I'm going to re-rinse everything off. As you can see here, I'm taking time to make sure that the paint's wet before I start washing with the microfiber mitt. This is just going to help the dirt slide off easier and it's going to avoid the possibility of rubbing that microfiber mitt across paint that's dry and, and possibly moving some dirt around on the surface of the clear coat, causing a scratch that's unnecessary. Not that it matters on an old truck like this, but I'm just trying to follow the rules the best I can to see what kind of results we get from it. So I've washed this truck using the best industry practices. And what's it got me? What's the point? Why bother? I think the real heart and soul of all of these things people say to do when washing your car is about damage control. When you're cleaning your car, you're, you're trying to do the best you can to keep it maintained. You don't want to take the dirt that's on the paint and scratch the paint and damage the paint further. That's why you're always supposed to work from the top down so you're not washing dirt onto an area you've already washed. The microfiber mitt, it will embed the dirt as opposed to it sitting on a thin surface like a t-shirt or a rag. Keeping the paint wet will always help the dirt and debris slide off. Working in the shade, you're not dealing with a paint and a clear coat that's heated up from the sun. It's kind of at its stable condition. The only reason anybody wash their cars, they, they want to take care of it. They want it to last a long time. All of these best practices lead up to one thing. It just keeps you from damaging the paint while you're trying to preserve the car. That's about it. So remember, every time you hit sub and like, you're helping somebody like yourself and I keep an old rig on the road. My name's Dave Whipple and you've been watching Cheap Wheels. Keep your junk on the road.